of your hand is up. Yeah, Madam Chair. I, just, I know it's kind of in general there, but I think um, you know, I was reading a lot of the articles around um, this effort, uh, and I think there's some misinformation out there. And um, I think it, it's time for the committee to go on the offensive. So as we think about strategic stakeholders that we want to sign up for information, I also think this group has a responsibility to reach out to especially the perceived quote unquote op opposition, or maybe people who just aren't sure about what we're doing. So um, as we think about um, who are some of these concerned stakeholders, um, I'd like us to start thinking about being proactive um, and engaging some of these impacted groups or people who think they're impacted um, and making sure that we get the opportunity to sit down and talk with them. Amy, I will come right back to you. Uh, Ms. Okay, Ann no Phillips. Interim Chief Sherbaum, I, I read the article and as I read the cities and states that these protesters came from, um, I couldn't figure out in my mind, why they were here. Uh, did you all ever, I guess, in your questioning of them, uh, find out whether they were being hired to come to do this or were they a part of, say, one particular organization and this is all that they do, just go from state to state doing this? Or were you able to ascertain any information as to why they were here, particularly in Georgia, doing this? Yeah, Ms. Phillips, that, that's a good question. And the, the bigger why uh, behind this is certainly a part of the investigation and, and primarily in the purview of the, of the FBI, the GBI, who are assisting this investigation. Uh, but right now, uh, motive aside, um, I would just refer, you know, some individuals have taken to social media uh, to take positions of, of being opposed to uh, certain public safety infrastructures. Others have taken to social media to uh, oppose um, uh, uh, certain for reasons of, of green space, which this committee has been a, doing a great job in educating around. Uh, absent those motivations, uh, we in, encourage everyone to exercise their First Amendment rights and do it peacefully and do it in a manner that uh, adds to the conversation uh, and contributes to this project. I just got back uh, from vacation. And so I sent out some emails to the committee members a little last minute, and I apologize for that. Um, I had asked uh, Marshall Freeman to track um, publications um, around um, um, the efforts. And because um, I wanted to get a sense of what's happening in the media and sometimes it's hard to keep track of it all. So thank you, Marshall. Um, you sent the information when I was out on vacation, but I forwarded um, the, the articles and um, tweets, et cetera, um, to all of you um, on the phone and again, um, I think there's some misinformation. I'd like the committee to actually review um, the materials that I sent. And um, please take note of who's authoring some of these. I do wanna to bring to the attention there is a um, committee member um, that is publishing um, information that is um, not representative of the collective we are here to represent our communities and um, the, the, the collective effort. And I don't think any of these articles went through you, Madam Chair. I don't think they went through Marshall Freeman. I don't think they went through the city of Atlanta. One of them was actually written by um, one of our um, advisory members to this, the Atlanta City Council. Absolutely, and thank you for that feedback. And I think <clears throat> particularly with one of the items that you just mentioned going out to city council, um, it's something I mentioned before, it can create confusion about what is the stance of the committee versus what is an independent uh, stance. And that is the very reason that we ask that the communication come through uh, the committee chair. Um, with that, uh, Ms. Phillips, I see that your hand is raised. So just to confirm, uh, we are going to send some form of rebuttal uh, concerning this um, re request that she sent to uh, city council. And the second part of that question is, is there any truth to what she's saying regarding the, uh, the groundwater surveys and whatever? And when I say truth, I don't mean whether she's telling the truth. I'm saying, is there any possibility that 
somewhere something was overlooked and we did not um, address it uh, transparently. Fair enough, we can absolutely ensure that there is a rebuttal. Um, and I think that the committee update itself uh, serves as a rebuttal because it speaks to exactly the work that we have done as a committee as a whole. Uh, but in terms of sending a direct address relative to what has gone out there, that can be crafted as well. Um, as far as whether or not there's any truth to the comments that have been made and just, just for clarity, transparency, we are talking about Lily Ponets uh, here in having sent uh, these items over to city council and several of the articles that are referenced. I, I, so we, we've, we've said the name Lily Ponitz and I wanna give the um, members time to review the articles, but her name has been on a number of the articles. She has written a number of the um, articles under her name. Um, and I think we just need to address membership. Um, should someone like her be um, a member of this committee? Mm -hmm. And my only concern with this is that I, I'm just not happy with people speaking for me or as for my community. And I don't even know who, what they're speaking about or I'm in disagreement with what they're saying. I just think that's, that's just out of alignment for me. I, I, I think she's out of line. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, don't apologize. Everyone has a right to their perspective. And so I appreciate you sharing that with us, Tori. I just have a question. Sure. And this is more a personal than uh, anything because I'm facing a similar situation with the Atlanta Planning Advisory Board. Somehow or another, millennials tend to think that they can write whatever they want to write in all of these little uh, newspapers, and they are supposed to be able to do that. And of course, they do have that right. But ultimately, what is our alternative as a board? And officially, we are a board since we are a base board since the city council uh, established it. So the motion is to give her notice or the motion is to terminate her? The motion is to terminate and that motion has been seconded. Our bylaws, however, require that she be given 10 days notice of any such action. And so even though the motion can be made, it, we cannot move any further until she has been given that 10 days notice and that period has expired. So what this does is set the wheels in motion. It is, hey, the committee is interested in terminating Lily Ponitz. We have a second on that. We cannot vote on it as a committee tonight. We can vote on it after she has been given an opportunity to be notified. And that does notification she, is 10 days. Does she have, will she be given an opportunity to speak against us? Absolutely. Like, you know, I mean, can she, I, this just feels like, you know, kind of, I mean, I'm not, I'm not um, saying that this is wrong, but it doesn't feel right either. I feel like this, this process is, is witch hunting at this point even though it's, I get it. I understand everybody doesn't want her speaking for them. I don't want her speaking for me either, but it just, it seems, I don't know. It doesn't seem right to me, sorry. And I think that one of the things that uh, we have to do as a committee is make sure that we uh, do a better job of controlling the narrative. Uh, there was a, a nice nasty gram uh, that went out to my community as a whole about me and my service to this committee about uh, even the committee's work, um, which, you know, I am, uh, according to this um, note that went out to my community, I am anti-Black, I am opposed to the Muscogee Creek people, I am, um, I'm a whole lot of terrible things, and apparently 100 years ago, I was up to some bad stuff. Um, didn't know I was here uh, for that, but uh, here we are, but the reason I bring that up here in this forum is to say, are we safe and secure when we go to this site? Uh, when we consider that, you know, even individuals are being targeted, um, you know, here, in, I mean, to be targeted in my community was quite um, upsetting, but at the end of the day, it's a choice that uh, someone or some individuals ultimately made. And so what, um, what does it look like for us to be able to go out to the site, given all of the activity that has taken place? Yeah. So it's, it's some, it should be a concern. 
it's a concern um, yes. when I saw that, when you went, you share that with me. And, and my concern is a volunteer. I mean, I'm a tax paying citizen. I'm not here to get attacked by people who are trying to bully their way because they have an ideology that we all should have to believe in and we don't understand what they're talking about. That's kind of mental illness bordering borderlining that. So I'm just concerned about all of our safety on this phone too, because they have our information that, that you know, this whole propaganda stuff. I just think that we just need to be careful because I'm, I'm a volunteer and, I, and I'm not trying to get caught up in a lot of craziness that, that I don't understand. Yeah. Just one final thing on language that this isn't just craziness. Um, these are echo terrorists um, and these are acts of terrorism. Um, and it's not just propaganda and it's, they are breaking equipment. They are threatening 74 year old men. They are threatening people in their homes. Uh, these are people who don't even live here trying to tell us how to live. Um, so I think this is, I, I want us to use that, that terms echo terrorism. And I'm somebody who cares deeply about the environment. I have solar panels. I recycle. I do everything I can. Um, these people are terrorists. That's it, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Sharon. I appreciate your commentary.